Waypoint set. Turn down. Bomb is on. <laughs> What a fool. Okay. M1216 shotgun. Fully automatic, four shot burst, spinning chamber reload system. What are my thoughts on this gun post patch? Well, you're going to have to excuse me if I kind of speak out of term, because as a non user of this pre patch, I can't really tell you the comparisons. So it's going to be kind of like putting a music critic in front of a cake baking competition. Still, I will do my best to utilize the tools that I have. Now I'm always open to being corrected. I don't mind, that's why we call it a debate. It doesn't mean what I say and what anybody else says is always right. There's always something to counter it. And I've always personally felt that this gun is quite overpowered. However, to be honest, I can tell you from using it after the patch, I think the balance is actually there. Because what it lacks in some areas, it most certainly makes up in others in spades. You see, what the patch had actually done, as far as I can understand, is added some range on this. So as opposed to it just being a close quarter gun, it's now made it stand up for its own in the medium range. What I found when I was running and gunning with this was that everything was going my way when it was in close quarter situations. The majority of people who I came into contact with were all carrying shotguns, and this one was standing up. Normally the Remington would be a bit of a bugbear for me, but in actual fact, I held my own. This gun is actually quite devastating. And if you can keep yourself in localised areas like corridors and such like, then you're going to be A-OK. -okay. As soon as you start venturing out into the open, you're kind of at a loss. Now, it's probably going to be a no-brainer when I tell you that the best attachments I found to use for this were the laser and the long barrel. Accompany that with lightweight, toughness, scavenger, extreme conditioning and tactical mask, you're going to be on a halfway road to heaven. The extreme conditioning, as much of a pointless perk as it actually is, is absolutely necessary to get into those close quarter situations as quick as possible. With the lightweight addition, it kind of makes you a running tank. But as soon as you venture out into the high traffic open areas, you're like a sitting duck. Also, the scavenger perk is a necessity when you want to top up those spent shells, along with the tactical mask because, well, I don't need to say anymore, do I? You see, the advantages I found with having the lightweight and extreme conditioning on was when you expel a few of those shells and you have to go for that cheeky reload, it's handy to get yourself out of the way as quickly as possible. Because the kind of people that play Black Ops now are just so unforgiving. So speed and agility is key. But that doesn't mean I had a full sense of security when I stepped out into the open areas. There's just no room for error. There are too many target finders and assault rifles and snipers to deal with. And unfortunately with this gun and like any others, you're going to come unstuck. You constantly have to move with an air of caution. Bobbing in and out of head glitching points for that reload because 16 shells get used pretty damn quick with this. But the one thing I will say with this gun is, it's a hell of a lot of fun. Compare it to the KSG, you're on the back foot straight away. The range on the KSG is fourfold of this gun. But, when caught up in a close quarter situation, this one lets you get away with murder. I don't think it's just the innate fire rate that helps you along with that, but I also think it's the disorientation of when you're actually firing at a target when you're standing next to him. And believe you me, I found my one biggest nemesis when I was moving around in those close quarter situations, the one and only legendary B23R pistol. Still, I believe is the most overpowered gun in this game. The problem is you've got an abundance of snipers who like to move in and out of corridors, so do you think that the majority of the quickscopers move with their rifles at the ready? Of course they don't. Their secondary is 90% of the time their primary. I know that doesn't count for everybody, but that's just from my experience of using this. So what about standing up to submachine guns? Does the buff make a difference? Yeah, I found it not too bad, but it was just too inconsistent. Once or twice I found myself putting eight shells into somebody. And this was, I suppose, in terms of the size of the character you're using, I'd say from about 7-8 feet away. That to me doesn't stand up to being a mass buff, but then again like I say, I can't talk out of turn too much because I never had much use out of it pre-buff. So as an overview out of all the shotguns, where does this stand in the ranking stakes? Well, I'd still give it a clean fourth, because at the end of the day, the KSG is far too accurate, the Remington's far too reliable, the Sega 12 is far too beastly, and I guess this one's just far too quirky. It's okay, just don't go outdoors. And if you do, get yourself back inside as quickly as possible, and you may have a chance of racking in a nice score at the end. But as far as inside combat goes, I'm sorry. It just comes to something when a rapid fire shotgun gets beaten to the draw by a secondary pistol. I've said it once before and I'll say it again. These secondaries are just too overpowered, but for some strange reason people still don't believe so. 
My lord, I'd like to approach the bench and put forward my case. The prosecution rests. Apocalypse done.